fashion refers to many things, such as clothes, shoes, makeup. It exists everywhere in our lives. For the clothing industry, the consumption of clothing is hugely important to economics of many countries. For example, research from the British Fashion Council finds that the UK's 66 billion pounds fashion industry accounts for six percent of the UK market. However, fashion also has a negative influence on the environment. Overconsumption and the disposal of unwanted clothing has become a global problem. Fashion and sustainability have had an uncomfortable relationship. Nowadays, while the clothing industry has made efforts to become more ethical, there still are many factors affecting customers' clothing purchases. Therefore, based on this background, I would like to discuss the factors affecting sustainable apparel consumption in China. This topic is divided into five different parts: consumption story, industry data, theoretical framework, potential recommendations, and self-reflection. Firstly, as for consumption story, you have an introduction from a global standpoint. From a global perspective, as mentioned previously. The fashion industry has been labeled as the second largest polluting industry after oil. To highlight this problem, the fashion industry was in the list of the UN as 17 Sustainable Development Goals to reduce pollution. Besides, a global non-profit organization was started in 2015 called the Fashion Revolution. The aim of the fashion revolution is to unite people and organizations to work together towards radically changing the way our clothes are produced, so that our clothes is made in a safe, clean, and fair way. It is widely believed that the developed countries will make more effort to follow the fashion revolution's goal due to the relative superior economic condition. However, in recent years, sustainability has become a hot issue in these ten emerging countries. And in this part, I would like to talk about sustainability in emerging markets. The first one is consumer intention. According to the State of Fashion report, almost 65% of consumers in emerging markets are already seeking sustainable fashion. And here are three main reasons that why sustainability is very popular in these countries. The next part, I would like to introduce the industrial data. This data is talking about Chinese sustainable clothing industry. As for the chart, the garment market of China reached over 105 billion dollars in 2018. Besides, China was the second largest market for apparel and footwear, which generated a total retail value of over 33 billion dollars in 2016. This was expected to have a 3% growth rate over the following two years.
because China has faced the same pollution problems from overconsumption of clothing, the Chinese government has transformed each of the sustainable development goals into action plans based on the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. For marketing ana analysis, more and more international fast fashion brands explore Chinese market. H&M is a good example. As for Chinese customers, the most attractive claims from clothing companies that can encourage clothing purchase is pollution reduction during the production process. It means that many Chinese customers have focused on sustainability of clothing in recent years. Although H&M have invested a lot in sustainability, customers haven't recognized it yet, with only 20% of surveyed customers describing fast fashion brands as ethical. Based on this consumption story, it is obvious that while Chinese customers may favor sustainability, they often showed attitude behavior gaps that inhibited the sustainable market. After talking about the key issue of my research interest, I can show that there is still a gap between Chinese customers' attitude and purchase behavior in sustainable clothing consumption. Focusing on this point, I would like to make an attitude behavior gap model for research. Before explaining this model, first, I will introduce the theoretical frameworks of the research. Here are two main parts in this section. The first one is planning behavior theory. As for planning behavior theory, it has became, uh, become a relatively mature and influential theory in social psychology, and it has also be, been widely appealed. It is mainly used to predict human behavior, explaining how attitude, subjective norm, and perceived behavioral control influence on people's intentions. The first one is attitude. Altitude refers to the degree to which a person has a favorable or unfavorable evaluation of the behavior. It consists of two parts. One is the strength of behavioral belief and the other is evaluation. The next one is subjective norm. Subjective norm refers to the perceived social pressure to perform or not to perform a behavior, such as influence of peers or groups on an individual's behavioral decision making. Like attitude, it also is determined by two factors. One is normative belief and the other is motivation. The And the last one is perceived behavioral control. Perceived behavioral control is defined as the degree of difficulty that an individual perceives when intending to perform a specific behavior. It also has two influential factors, control belief and perceived power. Besides, according to the res recent research of sustainable consumption in China, except for the elements in planning behavior theory, there are other elements influencing the sustainable consumption, such as environmental knowledge, economic factors, shopping values, and so on. Therefore, in the research, I would like to combine these elements into my model. Based on the different background between China and other countries, I think it is important to pay attention to the cultural difference in the sustainable consumption. Therefore, I would like to introduce the phase theory in the research. Consumption phase as an image of social self is formed by traditional Chinese social behavior factors. 
Consumption space now combines traditional characteristics of more modesty and a desire to be more successful and outstanding than others. Now, Chinese customers pay more attention to brand prestige than value quality of products because such features are more likely to fulfill and desire of the face. Firstly, there are three different dimensions of Chinese face theory. The first one is social conformity. In the Asian of China, same is safe. Very few Chinese dare to take the rest of standing out in any way. The tradition principle of harmony guides Chinese to avoid extreme behavior and conflict the maintain to maintain the relationships with people. It now works in consumption as well. Chinese people are willing to quick find and imitate a fashion image to find the recent trend in daily life. For example, when iPhone became a status symbol of the wealthy elite, it immediately became the great popular in China. Even many young people in big cities spend a month's salary on an iPhone. The next one is the group distinctiveness. This term refers to conformity with one's social groups. Chinese people are strongly integrated with their own social group and differ significantly from out groups. The last one is conspicuous. It is likely to a dimension of consumption phase in the sense that Chinese consumers signal their social status and wealth through consumption, especially of famous brands, to reflect success and enhance phase. This point is same as conspicuous consumption during the rapid and economic development in the last 30 years, Chinese now intend to maximize their individual face through impressing others by consumptions. Based on elements I mentioned in the previous section, I've made an altitude behavioral gap model for the research. It should also be noted that I just put all elements into two parts external and internal. I also want to make an explanation about the social norm and face element in the model. It seems that they are quite similar with each other, but I think the social norm is just a kind of pressure for society. The Chinese face saving element comes from the quality in Asian China. It seems like an in internal factor to affect Chinese, so I put these two elements in the model as the mo moderate factors. Next part is potential recommendations or contributions. And in this part, it is divided into three different parts. The first one is Chinese potential sustainable apparel market. In this part, it has two main factors. The first one is environmental knowledge. 70% customers are becoming very familiar and will invest time in learning more about the material of clothing. And the next one is the actually is the government standpoint. The nation's policies calls for an upgrade of the textile industry. These two points play, uh, play an important role in the future Chinese market. Next one is focusing on marketing segmentation of Chinese consumers. Before doing this research, I found that a lot of journals, they just pay more attention to the different age of Chinese consumers about their attitude to the situation consumption. But in my research, I just find new elements to divide into different groups to talk about what they are what they are think about this consumption of the sustainability. 
So in the future, I think there are other elements we'll use in the research. And the last star is inspiration from Chinese face saving concept and shopping value for the fast uh, for the fashion brand. I think managers uh, should make more efforts to understand how face saving can be appealed to their promotion strategies, and also they can use different value delivery strategies based on the face saving in China. And the last one, I think the different shopping values will make different influence about, uh, to narrow the exhibit altitude and behavior gap. The last part is self-reflection. Firstly, I would like to explain the reason why I would like to choose this topic. Last year, my Chinese friend started a sustainable clothing design office in China. She knew that I was a major media major in university, so she asked me to help her make an online advertising strategy for her company in China. At first, I collected a lot of data about the Chinese customers' demands of sustainable clothing because I thought it could be a potential market in China. However, though I made a lot of different tactics through different media, it was hard to attract customers to buy our products. At that time, I didn't know the reason why people were not willing to buy them. For the course, I've learned a variety of theories from the customer perspective. I think I need to find the real elements to figure out this problem. Because besides, I didn't focus on a special group of people at that time, so I couldn't understand the real demand of the customers. So in the future, if I have a chance to help my friend to make a new advertising planning for her company, I would like to have a special survey, specific survey based on elements mentioned in the research. Secondly, I realized that the cultural elements still plays an important role in customer behavior. I remember that we had a discussion during the course about whether cultural difference will be eliminated or not. A lot of students argue that because of the internet, the gap between different cultures will be decreased. However, I had another opinion about this issue. I think it should depend on people's subjective motivation. It is hard to make a judgment about the accuracy, accuracy of information because people receive an overload of information in every day. Therefore, the cultural gap still exists in different countries. In the future, if I need to deal with the international marketing planning for multi international corporations, I think I need to pay more attention to the cultural element in the planning. For example, which cultural elements will, will affect the purchase decision? If I cannot focus on these questions, I will definitely fail in my planning. Finally, I, as I mentioned before, I think from the customer a consumer behavior course, I have started to think about the concept of segment of each consumer group. Before the course, I was aware of the importance of customers' needs, but I think it's very difficult to know all the customers' demands from the target market or the potential market. But well, just reading some journals in the course, I found that if the marketers can access the key segment of customer, they will succeed in the future planning. It also provides a chance to find the, the new research topic when focusing on different segments of the customers. Besides, from the course, I've learned that it is more complicated to say which element is the direct factor to influence customers to make a purchase decision. Sometimes there are many factors 
which jointly stimulate cons consumption demands, so involuntary in involuntary environment. Based on this background, I think it is significant to do a lot of research based on the different customer behavior for the purchases of the products. This research also provides some suggestions for the marketers, and I hope I can use these elements into my future work and maybe to help my friends to enlarge the market of her company. Thank you for teaching us such useful theories of consumer behavior and also I can I hope I can use them into my future research. <laughs>